Hello from University of Phoenix Stadium, Rich Gray and Bob Campus. The Cardinals move to 9-1, a 14-6 win over the Detroit Lions. Uh, and we'll start with the offense. Drew Stanton, first two drives looked pretty good, and then it was kind of back to earth after that. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was really good when the script was going. Yeah, they didn't have chances in the first 20 plays or so. They script, and I thought once they got out of the script, uh, things kind of went haywire there for a little while. And, yeah, he threw some balls that obviously you know, people have been listening to the show the last couple years. <laughs> That's what you see in training camp every day. You know, passes right to linebackers and whatever, but uh, they got by. And then, you know, of course, the, uh, the third and ten play at the end there where they got, I thought, a pretty generous spot. I'm not yeah. sure what they said on television, but, you know, the Lions have used their timeouts. And because it was before the two-minute warning, they couldn't challenge. Right. And because it wasn't well, after the two-minute warning, there wasn't a booth review. So, like I said, I'm not sure. It sure looked like that was short of the first down. The the consensus on Twitter, from what I when I was following the game, was about 50-50. Some people yeah. thought it was a good spot. Others thought that if the Lions had a timeout, they would have challenged and would have been overturned. So it could have yeah. gone. That's how close it was. Well, I guess. just from the naked eye, I thought for sure yeah. it was short of the first Same down as soon as the ball was completed. So we have a pretty good. End that so uh, I was surprised but anyway that was a big play and uh, they didn't run a draw or throw a screen which I suggested and punt it <laughs> at that point you know, it's not like they were giving up big yards so yeah he made enough plays but I think he's got to play better obviously four out of six on the road from here on out yeah. Some of the better defenses in the league. I, you know, obviously a good defense today, a really good defense today. But, right. You know, that's that's going to be interesting. You mentioned defense, though. The Cardinals' defense uh, did not allow a touchdown the entire game. The two turnovers only led to a field goal. Right. So they they played outstanding. They did, and I think they thoroughly confused Matthew Stafford. Uh, yeah, they showed up in blitz looks a lot and dropped back. Uh, he was actually getting rid of the ball sometimes when he didn't have to get rid of the ball as quickly as he as he thought he was going to have to. And really, I think that was pretty much predicated by the fact that the four defensive linemen that basically play most of the time, especially Dan Williams, who we got to start thinking Pro Bowl possibilities as far as Dan Williams. Uh, and, uh, Calais and Campbell, uh, Calais and uh, Kelly, and uh, also Frosty Rucker, all four of those guys did a really good job uh, and made plays. And uh, you know, the fact that they didn't have to blitz to get to him, they did some, certainly. But not as much as they have. And the fact that they didn't have to blitz to get to him, I think, made things a lot easier in coverage. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, coverage sacks. And also, I mean, speaking of the secondary, Patrick Peterson did a very good job shutting down Megatron today. Yeah, he shadowed uh, Johnson. I believe it was five catches and 11 or 12 targets. Uh, so that was a good job. And he was on him for the most part. Powers was on him a couple times there towards the end. Right. Uh, and they, they didn't complete either of those passes. So, uh, yeah, that was a little different. And also, Cromarty, for the most part, was on Tate, who's, yeah, he's had 900 and some yards this year before yeah. today, and he only had two catches for 41 yards. So uh, that was a huge deal also. And keep on going here, yeah, defense and special teams kind of go, we talk about you know, pitching and defense and baseball and defense and special teams. And Drew Butler, who I suggested maybe should be out of here a couple of weeks ago, he had two punts inside the 10-yard line. Of course, he had the one on the one-yard line, in which Arians wisely challenged, and that was a 55-yard swing and field position. So, you know, that was an amazing play in itself. Yeah, and uh, well, like we said, though, the Cardinals 9-1. Seahawks lost earlier today, now have a three-game lead in the division, uh, but it gets a little tougher from here on. It does. But the four out of six on the road, obviously they're six and all home now. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that they wanted to do. They only lost two home games in two years now with Arians here, and obviously the undefeated this year. But you know, the Seattle games, two of the next uh, uh, few, at least two of the next six, right? <laughs> I don't, I'm so bad at the schedule. I barely know who they're playing. I had to ask on Friday who they were playing next week. So I know they're playing Seattle, yes. and then they play somebody after that. The Falcons. The Falcons, okay. okay. And I know they have Seattle twice in San Francisco, yeah. and St. Louis once, yeah. and somebody else. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's uh, uh, so far so good, obviously. You have a three-game cushion before you play those games yeah. against the division opponents. Yeah, that's very key, very key. Uh, is there anything you would like to add about the debacle in Corvallis, or do you want to save that for the 10 15. Show? <laughs> okay. 10 15 tomorrow. I've been working on that very hard until about uh, 2 in the morning. 
and uh, that was disgusting. Yeah, How's I that? think that's a very that's a very good word. Yeah, it was a very good word. Uh, I think it's easy and safe and accurate to say that no college football team of the 128 and whatever they call it, Division One or FBS, FBS, that's FBS, correct. none of them had a worse day than ASU yesterday. Compared, to, in addition to them losing, everybody else that they needed to win, you know, they needed to lose one. Uh, it was just a disaster from the day. So that'll be a 10-15? That'll be a 10-15. What else, what else is on the show tomorrow? Well, the U of A won. Yeah. I'm not sure how they do this sometimes. <laughs> They've played not well, quite frankly. And Chris Peterson uh, gets the, you know, this incredibly stupid coaching move of the week for not taking a knee. And it would have been uh, somewhere between 5 and 15 seconds to go, and they just could have punted. And that's it, but they ran and Bond ran, forced a fumble, and I was very glad actually to see the scouring kid kick the winning field goal. Uh, anybody that's, uh, you know, he got death threats after the yeah, SC game, and, yeah. and he scored a touchdown earlier in the game, so that was kind of cool. So that was good. I mean, that's, that's nice to know, no matter who where, that's absurd, and especially college kids, but any yeah. any sport, any sporting event, that's insane. But anyway, we'll have that 10.45. Plenty of Cardinals tomorrow, 9.15, uh, 11.03, and 11.15. And maybe more, if I, you know, depending on my change. <laughs> Who knows? There's a lot of stuff. Uh, NBC Sports 1060.com. Bob Kent's bottom line. That's, that's we'll have you that, that up in, uh, probably by the time you see this. Yeah, probably. You'll yeah. have a six-pack. What time is it? Anyway? I have no idea. They don't have a They, don't they have used a clock to have a clock. It was up here during training camp. Yeah, no, they don't have it. Yeah, hold it here. 6.14, it'll be up by 7. All right, there you go. So, for Bob Kemp, I'm Rich Gregg, and the Cardinals 9-1. and one. I think it's their uh, big showdown in Seattle next week. Uh, for more Cardinals coverage, tune in to NBC Sports 1060.com.